listening to a wide variety of music from the Emerald Coast of Florida on 30A Songwriter Radio. Good morning, and we are here for one of our living room interviews with Fine to Drive. How are you guys doing this morning? Great. So um, let's start out by each of you introducing yourselves and be telling us a quick little blurb about how long you've been playing music. Okay, I'll start. I'm Susie Bassino. I grew up in Kansas City, and I have lived in St. Louis for a long time, and um, been playing music off and on my whole life. I'm, a, I'm Michael Eisenbeis. I grew up in North County, St. Louis, NoCo. I've um, been playing since I was a kid, and uh, have never stopped. Just band after band after band. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Now, when you say your whole life, and since you were a kid, have you are your parents into music, or is it just something that's been in you forever? Well, for me, no. My, my parents were very into music, but they weren't musicians. And I've just always uh, kind of been a singer, been in choirs, and, and, uh, and didn't pick up the guitar till probably much later. But, mm-hmm. um, and that's when the songwriting happened. But music's just been a huge part of my life, always singing in the shower and in the car. <laughs> Yeah, that, my parents didn't play, but they, you know, there was music in the house all the time, and they, you know, they encouraged it when I when I wanted a guitar. You know, they were they were they assisted me in every step of the way. But I did have an uncle that would come over Saturday mornings, and he could play a hundred songs, oh, you know, wow. Elvis songs and old country songs, and he would do that every Saturday morning while my mom and, and him drank coffee, and and that was probably the biggest influence in, uh, on me as a child. So that's beautiful. He had a great voice. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Has he heard you? Uh, yeah, he did. He he passed away about two years ago. Uh, but yeah, he he came out. You know, he used to come out over the years in the different what, whatever I was playing with at the time. But what a wonderful yeah. tribute. That's got to feel so good. Yeah, he he was a, a great guy. As a matter of fact, he he shows up in some of our songs in <laughs> in some ways. Not not always the best ways, but. Uh, but he shows up still. Yeah, he does. That's awesome. Well, I would love to jump right in and get a song so the people listening can um, hear what I'm so excited about. Sure. I think um, I think we'll do one. Uh, this is one coming off the new one. Um, it's kind of just a kind of a classical country song. So. Thank you. 
I can't even tell you how much I love that song. Oh, <laughs> I love the way that yeah. sounded. I loved the harmonies. I loved the guitar, and I loved the words. Thank I you. mean, that was I just, <laughs> and I'm not even the, the biggest country music. Um, you guys, that was so freaking good. Thank you. I love it. I love the sound of the guitar. The twanginess reminded me of hanging out with my grandparents, who were so into country music, and you don't hear that a lot. You don't hear that that right. whole vibe, that sound, and the words. I'd wreck my life for you. Pretty profound, very simple, but it's like, you know what? That's, that's kind of what happens. Well, <laughs> I mean, and that's the song just grew out of that one line. I think you you said I it just, one day, yeah. and I was like, that's a cool song. And, <laughs> and uh, we both have such uh, a love of classic country music. We both grew up with it. Our, both of our fathers who have, have passed away um, and have never heard us play together, but they really brought us both up, I think, on this kind of classic music. Unbelievably, you nailed it. So, oh my gosh, I love that. I've never yeah. listened to a band that brought me back to my childhood like Aww. that. So that, awesome. oh, oh my god, I love it. You know, <laughs> so. and, and we kind of have to say, you know, um, our, our we do we're a five piece band, Find a Drive. You know, we've got mm-hmm. uh, Quentin Co that plays bass with us, uh, Adam White who plays drums, and uh, the great Bob Breidenbach. Bob Breidenbach, our um, our Dobro player has played with John Hartford, with Vince Gill. Uh, you know, just all mm-hmm. kinds of people. He's a veteran of many areas and uh, many styles. And we'll bring him with us next time. Yeah, that's um, yeah. so. There's usually when you're playing five of you. Yes. Yeah. Well, this uh, Find a Drive basically started as an acoustic duo, and we've just kind of grown it into a five-piece band, and um, that's who you'll hear on the album that's coming out. Which I was about to ask about. Yes. So we just recorded um, a 10-song original uh, CD that will be out probably, I'd say, mid-November, maybe a little sooner. We actually just received uh, final mixes just the other day yep. while we were down here. So it's How um, exciting was that? Yeah, it was kind of really cool. Really fun. Really so fun. We spend a lot of time driving in the car to make sure it sounds okay. And, <laughs> Isn't you know. that the truth? <laughs> oh, you can hear it test. the best. <laughs> Just crank that it up and so go. so true. So where can people see you? Do you guys have a website? Do you have we anything do. like that? We have a findadriveband.com, and we list all of our gigs. And we're here while we're down here in uh, Florida, we're playing tonight in Destin at the Funky Blues Bar at 7.00. And tomorrow night, we're playing at Marie's Bistro at 8. And then Saturday night, we're playing at Steamboat Grill in uh, San Rosa Beach at 6. Man, so it's three it's parties. Anybody in the right? panhandle, you do not want to miss. We, we have to say, we're getting a little bit spoiled of beach during the day, playing music <laughs> at night. It's really not a bad life. It's it hard happens. It's hard to go to the leave. beach, and you come back, and you relax. And it's like, oh, I have to go. we have to go work tonight. It's you just really don't want to, but, but yeah. you get there and everything's amazing. Yeah. So. And you go to work and everybody is happy. And, right. you know, man, so I want another song. Can okay. we have one? Sure. <laughs> sure. What do you want to play? Let's try. Um, let's try. Um, let, well, you know, let's, let's do what Whiskey did, actually, the title track off of, off of uh, the record. This is the song that was inspired by... Um, people in her life and I, 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 I talked about that uncle who was so important to me and and um, I, I told Susie, you know, I mean, he was such an influence on me, I said, I, I wish you would have met him. She, she never met him and um, the last couple of years, I mean, my uncle worked for 40 years as a firefighter. Uh, he, he lived that lifestyle, just loved it. Um, he was the most funny, enigmatic guy I've ever been around in my life. And the last couple of years, he just started drinking whiskey and and um, you really know, I, I mean, it was not him anymore. And mm-hmm. I, and I'm, I'm not saying it in a bad way. It, you know, it's just, it, it just changed who he was. And I, I once told her, I was like, man, I wish you could have met him before what whiskey did. And it, it was another one of those. Oh, that's a great title. All right, we'll figure out a song <laughs> about that. And we've kind of incorporated that into several people of our life. But, um, but this is a, this is a title song. Of the record. shown on canyon walls as shadows fall instead of
took it all Well, he thought he cared for mama He thought love was just a thing that money bought This time spent on the bottle Put her on every pill that she's got City in the snow As far away from Texas You can go It's really not that cold But instead the lazy creek rolls by Every place he's known throughout his life And he holds that bottle higher Than his job has got his children You can't blame the man, but really it's just what whiskey did. What whiskey did You can't judge the man You can't change the man Try to change the man But really it's just what whiskey Amazing. Again, so, so good. Thank you so much. It says a lot to that song, you know? Well, we were really talking about Uncle Doug when we were writing this song and about parents who, you know, worked their whole lives and maybe didn't uh, get to see a lot of the things that we saw. And we had recently been to Chicago and uh, we were staying in a, in a friend's place that was a, a high rise building. And so we that line, I w- he said, I wish my dad could have seen this. And the, that was that line, the way Chicago skyline fills your eyes from 30 stories high. Because that's a, a picture that you have in your mind that you carry with you. And it's yeah, it really absolutely special. is. Yeah. Yep. Beautiful. I agree. I don't know if it's good or bad, but it'll resonate with a lot of people, I'm sure. Definitely good. But you know what I'm saying. So that's the title song. Of the CD that's coming out, right? Yes, it is. And when can people expect to get that? Well, we're hoping it will be finished. Like we said, it's it's being mixed right now. It's going to have to be mastered and produced. So we're thinking probably um, end of October, hopefully sometime in November for sure. Yeah. And do you know yet how people will be able to get that? They will be able to um, order it through us on findadryband.com, um, iTunes, CD, CD Baby. Baby. We'll even have those old-fashioned CDs that some people yeah. still can play. 
I mean, it's, physical, it's, the hard copy. It's funny, you hand those out and people are like, I have no way to play this. Like, you know, it's, everybody's so used to the digital it format It is, it's now. crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Though, and then you think albums are coming back so big now. I know, now. I know. It would be so fun to have, a, have an album. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you never know. We play a lot of records at home, and so maybe someday. <laughs> yeah. So what has it been like? You've, you're down here, you love the beach, you're going to be playing... Beach. Think you'll try to come back, or yeah, we'd love to. We we're uh, luckily we have some wonderful friends who have been hosting us down here, Kim and Art Lloyd, who have a beautiful home in watercolor. So we have been spoiled by them, and really <laughs> easy because of them we're down there. here, and we decided to try to play some music while we we're down here too. So it sounds like fortunate. a great plan. Yep. Yeah, but Absolutely. we definitely want to come back. Well, you're welcome sure. here anytime. Thank this you. is fantastic. So um, another song, maybe. Yeah. Sure. Why don't you pick this one? Why don't we do a song that um, is about a small town in Texas where my, my aunt is from. This is my dad's sister. My dad grew up on a farm in Nevada, Missouri. And if you're from Missouri, you say Nevada, Missouri. And uh, so my aunt um, spent her professional life in, in Texas and, and now is retired to this beautiful town called Wimberley, Texas. And it's near Austin, and it is just um, a beautiful small town, kind of at the confluence of a creek and a river, and just, it's one of my favorite places to go, and I've, uh, we just decided to write a song about it.
so much. Beautiful. Beautiful. I think we need to tune these things, Susan. I think okay. uh, the Murder City guitars come down into this humid weather. and <laughs> You know, we get that a lot. People's a guitars hard. going from outside, if it's in the car, coming in. It's a nonstop thing. Shannon and I haven't spent too much time in Texas, and I know Austin is one of the places we want to go. But I want to go there now after that song. I I just love it. It's so peaceful. It's so beautiful. It's it's a very small town with some amazing people and great little shops. And, and you and I were talking about boots earlier. I've got a couple <laughs> pair of boots in the vintage stores down there. Oh, gosh. And, uh, yeah, it's, How far is Wimberley from I, Austin? It's, it's about close, isn't it? 45 minutes. Oh, heck, okay. that, by the time you I drive think. to Texas from here, that's nothing. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's hot. And, I mean, they go through. I mean, they, they had um, a, a lot of rain this past, um, you know, Houston floods. Um, right. Gosh. That area. And they had, um, you know, they've got droughts frequently. But um, when, the, when the water's up and the sun is out, it's gorgeous. I recently had a friend uh, that retired from where I work. And um, he, uh, he moved to... I guess south of Dallas and St. Louis has pretty bad summer sometimes really mm -hmm. humid you know we'll go through a two or three week stretch sometimes that everything's plus 100 degrees Oof. and he moved down there and he said you know after noon I can't even go outside he's like it's so miserably hot and dry mm -hmm. you know so I, I don't know I've never been to Texas so but it's like different it. it is and so from St. Louis what is the music scene like there it's a great music scene it's a, there's a huge variety of music it's a very tight community of musicians and um i mean michael's There's been playing in bands he was in a band um when he was in his late teens called the nukes it was a big touring punk band in the midwest <laughs> and uh i mean you got you know probably know everybody in, in st louis i mean you know scene. i think everybody you know we all know everything fingers out you if you mm -hmm. don't know somebody you know somebody that does and and what's cool it's a really supportive music scene um there's everybody plays on everybody's material you know um there's a great band in town, the Funky Butt Brass Band. Uh, they, they're they a, a horn-based band, and they do all kinds of New Orleans-style stuff. And I mean, they play with everybody, but they've recorded on everybody's, you know, mm -hmm. everybody's releases. And uh, it's just, that's just kind of how the music scene is. Everybody helps everybody out. And there's, the competition type thing has kind of went away. Like when I was a kid, you know, everybody was competitive and mm -hmm. had to be the, the best and the, you know, the loudest or whatever. But now you it just seems like it's the loudest, extreme. probably. <laughs> it's, it's definitely very supportive now, which is which. It's a great. It's a good place to be. That's good. But I've heard that we have some musicians that live here now from St. Louis, and uh, they said the same thing. It's really, it's a great scene up there. And do the people do they, the audience do they fill the venues? Do they appreciate it? Is it? Um, they do, they yeah. do. and I, I find that in St. Louis, if you're playing in smaller clubs and restaurants, it's really those people in that area that really frequent those. Mm -hmm. So you kind of know that when you go to this place, you're going to see these people. And when you go to a different part of town, you're going to see these people. I but think a lot of it, you know, music is an older person thing now. I mean, you know, it's a 35-year-old person plus thing. Y young people just don't listen to this. Right. People playing guitars and as much as like when, when I was a kid. Um, so it's just, you know, you're kind of, it's that, that evolving landscape of, of who your listeners are, um, who who can come out. You know, what I've noticed is the gigs have gotten earlier. You know, you used to play from <laughs> 9 to 2 in the morning, and now gigs are 7 to 11. And yes. That's, you know, it's, it's really better for everybody involved. <laughs> it but, is uh, better for everybody. I don't want to do, do the 9 to 2 anymore. <laughs> yeah, those are bad. Isn't that right. funny how that happens? Yeah. And uh, not to get on a soapbox or anything, but it it all you young people out there... Go listen to live music. Keep it alive. Keep yes. the venues going because there is no scene without them. You, right. you have to get out there and listen. And, and learn to play music. Seriously. I don't know how, how many young people are I, really learning new instruments. You know, I, I keep reading articles that guitar sales just keep dropping every year. And, and they'll say that, well, there's no guitar heroes anymore. There's... Uh, yeah, I, you know, I know electronic music is really popular with young people, but I still have like this dream that in you know twenty years, some some kid's gonna pick up a guitar that it, that his dad's got sitting in the corner yes. when he's fourteen, and he'll be the coolest kid in class, and it you know it kind of comes around again. Everybody started like that, yeah. you know. Everybody did. I was just um, going through stuff on. Uh, 
online the other day and it said one of the things it said was support your garage bands even black sabbath was on and it had them all when they were really young looking in i don't know if it really was a garage but it sure looked like it and it's like man seriously you know it's real it's weird when you look back like it almost seems like and and I, i'm not diminishing music but it was such a popular thing it was like Anybody, it seems like anybody who had some songs and had some representation could get signed and go out on the road. They might mm-hmm. not be huge, but it just seems like it was like, this is the thing. This, this is where we can make money. Everybody right. thought we get a band, we'll put them out on the road, we'll make some money from them. They'll, you know, it's a different world. It is different. And you hear it both ways. Like I hear people say, man, it's so great now because I can, you know, just bust the CD out in my bedroom or, you know, they put, you know, things up on the walls in the bathroom and that's great. And I love when people explore their art like that. And I love the different, you know, things you can do with the computers and the electronics. And that is great. And anybody can put their CD that they've made out wherever they want. But there's something about that live music. Go out and see the performance because it just changes everything. The energy, the feeding off of each other is just amazing. Um, I was just handed a few of the people that are listening to us right now. (laughs) And this is just from our website, not including all the apps that uh, we have for every mobile device. We're on Apple TV, we're on Spreaker Radio, Stitch In Radio, Tune In Radio, Road Rage Radio. I always wonder about that one's kind of funny. Um, (laughs) And those are all broadcast live. Oh, yeah, and we've recently been picked up by iHeartRadio, which is so exciting to us. I know, right? Um, That's kind of a process to go through to become one of the people that they feature, but we're there now. So I know it's so exciting. Awesome. And I, also then, as soon as the live broadcast is done, it is podcast afterwards. So the easiest way to listen is to go to any app store, put in 30A Songwriter Radio, click on the lips, download the app, and you can listen to not only these guys, they will be on the top of the thing until maybe Tuesday. I'm not sure the top of it. And uh, then there's the next, like, 326 broadcast that we've done but um you can also listen at places like Mixcloud, all these things that feature podcasts as well so literally put the name find a drive in google it you will find them everywhere just from this let alone all the wonderful things that you guys do so what is a typical show like for you guys when you go out is it there's five of you usually or well it could be anywhere from five of us to two of us or three of us Kind of oh, I didn't even the read the cities. Wait, yeah, <laughs> the phone ahead. turned off. Near, oh, I got it. Okay, first one I can't pronounce. Then we have New Orleans, Miramar Beach, Houston, Freeport, Destin, Atlanta, Pensacola, St. Louis, Austin, Kirkwood, Brentwood, Crestview, Fridley, LaGrange, Navarre, Panama City Beach, Phoenix, St. Charles, Tallahassee, Biloxi, Callaway, Chipley, Clayton, Coconut Creek, Collingswood, uh, Curtiba, I can't, I'm not sure, <laughs> Daphne, Dayton, <laughs> Defuniac Springs, Dothan, Fontana, Fort Oglethorpe, Fort Worth, Franklin, oh my gosh, it goes on, let's see, Jackson, Lawrence, Metairie, Midwest City, Myrtle Grove, New York, New Delhi, Niceville, Okaloosa, Orlando. Shout out to all you guys down there. I don't know how to see. This is Shannon's phone, so hang on a minute. (laughs) And countries. United States, India, Norway, Spain, and the United Kingdom are all listening right now. So we thank you guys all for tuning in because we can't do what we do without you. Just like people can't play in venues without you. So go out and support your live music scene. Awesome. Now, I want to hear another song because I have babbled long enough. Well, I think we'll actually, <laughs> now that we know all those people listen, we'll try one, what the, one that we haven't really played live. Um, you have I'm this looking look at of him surprise like, in your well, face. Which I know. song is he talking <laughs> uh, This is one uh, off the new record um, called Winter Takes a Vacation. Winter Takes a Vacation? Yes. When it, wait a minute, is it, what key is it in? I forget, it's, it's in A. Yeah. See? That's how much Duh. we don't play this song. I love it. I absolutely <laughs> love it. <laughs> oh, that's 
And you are listening to Find a Drive. When it takes a vacation, I'm left at the station again. It's the Abraham Lincoln 550, I'm thinking. It's probably just pulling in. Well, I pour a companion and then let the sand in. Don't even care when we arrive. When we ride. When. shallow her dress lemon yellow a hard color for most girls to wear she doesn't complain but her face stays the same and you know she thinks life is unfair she's a child she's a child she's a child tracks now there's no going back it's gotta be summer somewhere when we ride when we ride when we ride when we ride when i finally see her it's just after easter another illinois april bloom green I pour in the Shelby with thought she would tell me I want to hear only one thing. But she cried. She just cried. Oh, Lord, she cried. She just cried. Life full of changes, a world full of strangers, plans that never come true. I don't know anything. Except what I feel for you When we ride Through the night The white noise of the tracks Now there's no going back It's gotta be summer somewhere When we ride Through the night The white noise of the tracks Now there's no going back But it's gotta be summer somewhere to sing i can't wait to hear you at night which <laughs> is it tonight you're gonna be at funky blue shack yes and that That's is a super fun venue good, good. yeah we can't wait yeah we'll be there from seven to ten tonight so that's going to be fun. 7 to 10 tonight at Funkies. That's yep. Wednesday night. Now, Thursday, you're going to be at Marie's. Is it Thursday? Uh, Friday? Today's Thursday. Oh, right? today Thursday. is Thursday. I should know I was, that. I was going to say, we kind of are on, you know, beach, <laughs> beach brain. I'm like, what day is it really? Yeah, try living here. Now, that's yeah. not my excuse, but I'll ro- roll with that one for sure. So. Yeah, Thursday night, tonight, and in, in Destin at Funky Blues Oh, Bar. you know what's funny? I actually heard from somebody... And saw online that there was going to be an incredible duo at Funkies tonight. I didn't put it together. So <laughs> words out. It should be a good well, night. That's nice. Seriously. And we'll post that, too, to Thanks. make sure that everybody that follows us knows. And then so Friday is at Marie's. Correct. OK, cool. That's another one. That's really fun. We, there, had, we yeah. were next door at, at Red's um, yes, feeling yes. station last night, and that was a really fun place. And we, we started to drive away, and we said, oh, well, that's where we're going. We're going right next door it like on it was hot yeah, Friday night. night. Yeah. yeah, it's at Marie's. There's a lot of locals that go there in Red's. I mean, there's nothing like Red's. You should check she out. She is great. Check out a night when she's the singing bartender she there. She did sing. I mean, that girl can sing, mix a drink, make change. I know food. it's oh, mind boggling it, with a huge <laughs> smile and usually yeah. a boa. I mean, right. <laughs> that yeah, is a fun she's time. Great. She was so sweet to us. Mm-hmm. Last night. You know, fun. and when we play these long nights, we do originals, but we do a lot of covers too. Yeah, we do course. a lot of old kind of classic country stuff and uh, some more um, modern Americana type stuff uh-huh. and kind of and whatever we might just come up with off the. 
You know, we're not the big request band. You know, like mm-hmm. if people are going to request, you know, people don't say, "Hey, do you know any Leuven Brothers?" Yeah, yeah we've never got. We'll play a lot of Leuven Brothers, but we never got a request for it. <laughs> well, but, who, uh, what is your favorite cover to play? You guys are welcome to. Uh, well, I mean, whatever you want. We have the time. You fill it how you like. I mean, yeah, we we love to play. Uh, well, we're big fans of Jason Isbell, Amanda mm-hmm. Shires. Brian um, Adams. Brian Adams. Um, yeah, I mean. Loretta Lynn, uh, Casey Chambers. We kind of do a variety. Do you, we'll do a cover song. Right. What do you like to do? That's funny because I was going to ask lead into with who are the bands that you like? Or do you have influence? Who's playing in your car? If you, you even do yeah. that now, again, the whole oh, CD totally. where you put them things. But <laughs> we play, uh, I mean, there's a wide variety in our car, especially with his musical background. It's, <laughs> it's either Slayer <laughs> or. Um, <laughs> That's so funny. Slayer is one of my favorite bands. Uh, me too. We saw a lot of, we've seen a lot of concerts this summer, too. We went and saw Queen in Kansas City oh, with Adam man. Lambert. That was a blast. That. That's cool. Yeah, it was, and, a, it was uh, amazing. Jason Isbell we saw, and Ryan Adams we've seen. Um, yeah, it's fun. S- Steve Martin and uh, Martin Short. Uh, was <laughs> awesome. Oh gosh, that was so fun. <laughs> yeah, he played the banjo. I gotta ask. So, you said Queen. Is Adam Lambert actually... Yes. Fronting them now. Yes. I haven't seen anything. And I'm a Queen fan. I didn't know. I, I saw him in the show when they mm-hmm. played together and thought, wow, that should be permanent, but it's a real thing now. Oh, no. Yeah. He is great. I mean, there's really no replacing Freddie Mercury. And it's cool because he'll sing and then they'll but they'll have screens with Freddie singing too, or I mean it's it was really neat how they kind of melded. I, I saw him in Chicago a couple of years ago and in Kansas City this time and the Kansas City one. It was a, the you know, I'm not, you know, I just like the songs, but <laughs> The the show that they put together, the like the the mixture between the um, the screens and the I guess you call it animation or whatever. The I mean, screens and the, the way lights. like the animation moved things on the it was it was a spectacle like I've never seen in my life. And they're He's coming out with a new like a I don't know whether biography a movie. Oh, that's oh, right. Yeah, yeah and the yeah. dude. Oh. It, it, there's something out online right now. It shows you the actor, looks and and like and it's unreal. Yeah, he really looks the part. So if he acts the part too, it's one I'm oh, definitely yeah. You know. See. Um, like the first guy that was going to play Freddie, I think was Sasha Baron Cohen, and uh, oh, no way. yeah, and then there was some <laughs> sort of disagreement on how to play. You know, like he wanted the story to be more dark, I guess. Oh. You know, um, but he would have—I mean, he would have looked like Freddie also. But this yeah. this guy looks yeah. oh amazing. My gosh. I mean, you have to be really skinny to play Freddie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so he's got to be like 18 years old or something. Right. Or so. <laughs> so this is a Jason Isbell song. Jason. songs make a judge man cry on the shoulder of somebody Saturday night read the good book studied it too but nothing prepared me for living with you lock me up tight in these shackles I wear tied in the key Turn your hair and the difference with me is I used to not care. Stock home, let me go home. Once a wise man to the ways of the world. Now I've traded these lessons for faith in a girl. Cross the ocean. In this frozen old city of silver and stone Ships in the harbor and birds on the bluff Don't move an inch to their anchor goes up And the difference with me is I'm falling in love Stockholm, let me go And the night so long I used to pray for the daylight to come Folks back home Surely have called off the search And gone back to their own Ships in the harbor and birds on the bluff 
Don't move an inch to me there ain't a ghost up And the difference with me is I'm falling in love Stockholm, let me go home Let me go home Let me go home good man anybody i'm telling you tonight funky blues shack it's a great place super fun venue and uh friday night friday night you're off work you're looking to kick off the weekend no better place than marie's unless of course we were having a friday night originals (laughs) but that ends early so go to marie's for sure it's in blue mountain beach right across from for the health of it amazing food awesome drinks they do not pour them weak and these guys it is gonna be a party i see dancing i see Ooh, just so much fun oh that's gonna be great and then um of course on saturday, saturday is steamboat grill yep steamboats and that's the one in santa rosa beach yes. and again so much fun so much fun Good. i saw we excited. one of my um one band i love for the very first time at steamboats it was a great time and uh I'm just so excited. I'm trying to think what's my schedule and where can I catch you guys? Well, we're really we really <laughs> appreciate these uh these places to welcome us mm-hmm. because we know they're very supportive of all their local bands and we think that's great because we come from a town mm-hmm. that, you know, we survive on on exactly. loyalty to the mm-hmm. local bands. So we really appreciate everybody yeah. sort of welcoming us with open arms mm-hmm. and everybody is just as nice as they can be everywhere we've gone. Really, and yeah. It's like you go to the store and people talk to you here. It's crazy. <laughs> you know, it's funny because uh, it was over 20 years now, but I moved here from Jersey, and I was so uncomfortable when I first moved here with all the hellos and the waves and the eye contact. Not that, it's, you know, Jersey's bad. I love it. It's where I'm from. But it's a little bit different. Sure. And, you know, the niceness, it took me a minute, and now I love it. It's just part of it. It really is. It's great. So um, I want to hear about your... Oh, well, first, I want to give a shout-out. I can't remember her name because I didn't write it down. Somebody called and told me you guys are going to be in town. This is our amazing agent, Jody Gilbert, in St. Louis with Talent Mm -hmm. Plus Entertainment. And uh, we have such a great team of people there, Sierra Brewer and Sharon Tucci and Kim Kerfer and... They have been so supportive of, of um, what what we've really tried to do and our goal with this band. And when we said, listen, we want to come down to 30A, we've been down here before. We love it. We would love to play down here. And uh, Jody set about making it happen and really just created a, an amazing schedule and great connections for us. So we really want to thank her for that. Yeah, I definitely wanted to give her a shout out because Absolutely. we get calls all the time from all over and she really stood out with the professionalism, the politeness, the follow through. That's one of the biggest things. I get so busy in here. Sure. I said, "Honey, please listen. You're not going to be paying. Call me back." And she was she was just on top of it and I really appreciate that. So thank you, Jody. Thank you, Jody. Great. Awesome. I'm curious about when you two write. You've mentioned it a couple times of how, you know, oh, he said this line or you said that. How does that evolve for you? You know, it it, it was a I mean, it was a it was a working process. I mean, I've I've uh, written songs since I was a kid like like Susie. Um, and I had specific writing partners. I still write songs with one of my best friends from high school who's a movie director in L.A. And we still oh, wow. bounce ideas back and forth here and there. Most of them are dirty songs, but I mean, you know, That's it okay. evolves somehow. <laughs> um, and then, uh, and then, actually, uh, the bass player in Whiskey Morning, who's our great producer on the Find a Drive record that's coming out, Kevin Gagnapain, him and I have uh, now written songs for several years. And then Susie was kind of a lone songwriter; she did it all on her own. And I did a little bit on my own, but then we we had to like find this working relationship to, to like write songs because. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you kind of get defensive. You know, you put up your dukes about your line or vice versa. But it's versa scary, too, because you think, I kind of like this line, but, oh, he's going to hate it. You know, and it, it just, it really did take a little a little time to kind of find the groove. And then, you know, he's got he's constantly playing guitar mm-hmm. all day long. <laughs> Even at work, he's a, he's a captain in a firehouse in St. Louis, and he takes his guitars to work. And uh, he's always re- writing these great little 
pieces of songs and these little licks, and then sometimes like the, like the iPhone is the most awesome thing mm -hmm. like ever invented to just record ideas like quickly and. And sometimes you know. I'll have some lyrics that I've written, and uh, and they just um, fall right into you know a, a lick that he's written, and um, they just kind of go from there. I think was I, for this release. I think "Wreck My Life" was one of the first ones, maybe. I think so. And uh, it, I fall into that really classic pattern of like a real simple formula, classic country song. Mm -hmm. And you know, Michael has written so many amazing songs that are, are different from the, the types of songs that I've written. So it's really helped me grow and write different types of songs, and maybe songs that are not so personal. There may be you know about other things and places and. Yeah, I, I think that song came so easily when we went to the, you know, we, we were kind of writing songs in three song blocks and like we moved on to the next song, um, which I believe was probably California Mudslide or something maybe. Yeah. And uh, that's like when, when the hackles started getting raised on each <laughs> one of us. It's like, oh, this isn't really going to be that easy until we figured out the way to do it, you know, the way to work together. And, and now it's, a, it's actually an enjoyable experience when we can, like, actually find the time to dedicate an hour or two right. to doing it. You know, you get so busy with everything else. But the iPhone, that, like you were saying, is so invaluable because we'll just be on the go and we'll think of a line and we'll just jot it down. So then when it's time we really want to start writing something, we'll go back and we'll listen to these clips. We'll pick out the sentences we've written or the signs we saw. And, uh, and I think that's probably how everybody's doing it mm -hmm. nowadays, you know, um, just recording a line in their phone or a little yeah. guitar part and then moving on, you know. You don't have to carry a, well, a tape recorder or whatever. Right, yeah, kids, but, well, and know. it's it's funny. I, the song uh, When We Ride that we played a little bit ago, mm -hmm. Winter Takes a Vacation, came from the one line, Winter Takes a Vacation. And I was on a flight coming back to St. Louis and I just had that line in my head and then um, kind of wrote most of the lyrics on the plane on the way home and had sort of a tune in my head and I brought it to him and he just turned it into a real song. Yeah, I think I came up with the winter takes a vacation line, and she came up with everything else because there is a line in there. Um, uh, Springtime in Shiloh, her dress, lemon yellow, a hard color for most girls to wear. There's no way I could have wrote, wrote that line. I mean, <laughs> it's a true. It's I would true. not yellow. know. You yellow know? is hard to wear. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> that is so great. I love it, and I love your honesty. That it's not always easy. Oh no. You know, I can imagine that. It, Sometimes it's, it comes faster. Some songs come faster than others, but um, sometimes we'll have parts of a song for a long time. We, we have a few right now that we really like that we've, we've got. I really think we need to finish, but... You know, I, you know it's kind of... Um, there's a couple songs on the record that, I, that we kind of finished, and I was like, I don't even want to do these. You know, let's not record it. Let's do something. You know, we'll put another one on there. Um, and then, like, some, another set of ears outside of us, mm -hmm. they hear the song, they hear the demo of it, or, and then they... They kind of re, you know, they spark that interest that you may have had in the first place. Like uh, I can't count on you, yeah. which we could actually play. Sure, probably. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, it's another one that we we haven't really played live, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is a song we wrote, and um, I think Michael wrote the line "I can't count on you," and um, I feel like I remember, you know, sitting in the kitchen writing this, and then um, we had it in a different key and. Um, just, you know, different, singing in a different way, and, and he was not happy with it. We kind of put it away for a few months, and I thought, I really miss that song. Like, I really want to get that song out, and we just kind of reworked it, and then we brought it to the band, and they were like, oh, my God, we love this song. We're like, really? Sometimes it feels like <laughs> this song might make you a little vulnerable, too, and you kind yes. of want to pull back from that, but... but um, actually, Kevin, the guy who produced the record, I mean, he was the kind of the guy. It was Kevin, wasn't it? Or was it during well, the rehearsal? I think, uh, I when we rehearsed, I remember um, Quentin, our bass player, who's an amazing stand-up bass player, said that. That's that's a great song. And it just helps knowing. I mean, these guys are our, our friends, but they're also honest. And I think they wouldn't play something that they didn't like. And they all. You, you always want everybody to buy into the song. Right. So, you know. Well, but exciting. Let's try it. Let's see if we remember the words. Lessons left to learn I can't 
heard from you The way you left is one I wouldn't choose But I feel stronger now than then I'd let you call the truth I can't begin to know what you've been through You could always count on me And I held on so patiently You know You made me believe that we were better than the rest Looking back I wonder if it's true It doesn't seem that long ago you wanted me for me Things that I know now that wouldn't choose Cause you could always count on me And I held on so patiently you know holding on is what I do and I can't count on you I still go about my days just like I did before. If you could see me now, what would you say? I bet you'd wonder how I lost the only thing I loved. Not that I could change it anyway. But you could always count on me, and I held on so patiently. You know holding on is what I do But I can't count on you Cause holding you is what I'll always do I can't count on you Wow, thank you for sharing that. Absolutely beautiful. Gosh. It's kind of sad, actually. Yeah, it is kind of sad. That's okay. <laughs> People are sad out there, and you give them something yeah. to relate to. Sad, it's important. Sad songs are a lot easier to write than a happy song. It's, it's, it's hard to make a happy song like, 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 Re you really buy into it, you know? It's like. <laughs> That's true. And sad people who listen to happy songs are like, ugh. I mean, I have to admit, I, I, I'll put it out there. I don't really buy into Jimmy Buffett. You right. know, I, I don't buy into that happiness vibe. He's, you know, I, I think he's found his market. We are in yeah. beach territory. No offense, though. Jimmy Buffett. But. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, I've found that um, it's a sign of an artist, like a true artist, when they have a hard time releasing anything. I've seen it with musicians. I've seen it, you know, they don't know if it's ready. Is it, you know, it's, it's, it seems to me from talking to so many artists that it's not an easy process. It's like, it's like giving birth and giving a piece of yourself out there. Like you said, it can be very vulnerable. You know, and you, you throw life experience into it and sometimes you worry about who may hear it. You right. Know? And you, you, sometimes things are, or, uh, are, are, very apparent and something sometimes things are disguised a little bit um but eventually sometimes they're not you know, about anyone we know sure i mean well in most <laughs> cases but you know i mean but <laughs> yes there's my little proof <laughs> plausible <laughs> deniability That's it's right. always yeah. the best thing to have <laughs> but it's true and even with even you know even with art, like if, if anybody comes into the coffee shop, I get questions all the time about the three paintings that are on the wall over there. Um, the, my sister did those. 
And she is one of the most amazing artists doing portraits, anything. Those she just, it's earth, wind, and fire. She just pulled them out of her mind. You know, didn't even yes. look at anything. You know how long my own sister, it took me years to get her to let me even just hang them in here. So it's just, it's something about that. And, and, and a true artist is because you're literally giving parts of yourself to people. And, you know, kudos for being able to do that. It's very, it's very and, you know, just like, you know, painters and musicians, you know, everybody, we're always our, our hardest, worst oh, critic. Oh, yes, absolutely. And, and feel like things aren't worthy or something, you know. Well, you guys are worthy, yeah. and I love it. I absolutely love it. And I can't wait to hear more. Do you have, I don't, I didn't even ask you in the beginning how many songs you were prepared to Whatever play. You, or, I mean, mm -hmm. all right, well, I want, we'll I want going. another one at least. <laughs> let's, uh, let's do the song that, um, that we wrote after uh, my mom called me on the phone and said, okay. um, did you know your sister's house is sliding off the hill? Oh, my gosh. She lives in Los Angeles, and um, we were inspired to write the song called California Mudslide after that. Her house is fine, by the way. Okay, good. <laughs> but, uh, but it's funny. We wrote the song, and she was afraid to tell her sister that she wrote a song inspired <laughs> by her <laughs> tragedy that was possibly <laughs> happening. Okay, we want to benefit from your... Uh, Inspiration comes from a lot of places. It's a true story. <laughs> and with all the rain lately, this fine to dry. ago and he's never been the same don't you know he's not the same he just wants that mudslide to wash his sins away wants his sins washed up
gorgeous. Man, and I got to say, you have to go out to the show. Both of them, they're gorgeous, both of them. But Susie, you smile more than anybody I've seen singing. I mean, she's, every time you look at her, she's just got this Should I be more smile. serious? No, it's she wonderful. She smiles when we sing murder ballads and all that <laughs> stuff. I think it's, it's kind of evil in a way. But. No, I, I think uh, because it's, I'm very happy doing, doing this, I feel like it's kind of a crazy blessing that I get to play music, especially play music with someone as talented as Michael. Just makes me look better than... Wasn't that sweet? <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. I love it. And once again, we are listening to Fine to Drive. You can see them at Funky Blue Shack and Dustin tonight, 7 to 10. Marie's on Friday. And what time at Marie's? 8. 8, Eight to o'clock. 11. 8 to 11 at Marie's. And that's one of my favorite places to go. Fun dance and everything. So that'll be great. And, and then we've heard nothing but good good things about mm-hmm. all these places. Yeah, it's fun. We're we're lucky around here for sure. And uh steamboats on Saturday. Yeah. And what time is that? That's six to nine, so that's a little earlier. Oh, it is a thirty A location? Okay. Steamboats on thirty A. And uh you can find these guys at findtodriveband.com, correct? And, yep, and on Facebook, uh, Find to Drive and Instagram. Come check us out. Absolutely. And uh, do you want to close that one more? Are you good? Or? Yeah, you know, I think um, I want to do... Um, so uh, when I first met Susie, it was kind of through a mutual friend of ours. Uh, Dave Henson owns Killer Vintage Guitars in St. Louis. It's the best guitar store in town. And... and um, Dave and Susie were playing in the Whiskey Morning Band, which has been around for several years. And um, he, I was in there checking out a, a beautiful 1968 Martin D18 that eventually ended up acquiring over the year. But, uh, <laughs> and now you should see his smile. Um, <laughs> yeah, right, right. And uh, he's like, hey, uh, we need a filling guitar player for this gig. Can you do it? And I'm like, I don't know. What are the songs? He's like, nah, you, no problem. And I didn't know any of the songs. <laughs> but that's the first time that I, I met her. And... Um, and, you know, so I ended up in the band, and she wrote this song called Quittin' Time, uh, which she actually wrote for the previous guitar player who was, like, perpetually single. <laughs> and, he was um, a, Ross Bell is a good friend of mine. I always tell him I wrote this song for him, wondering what would happen if this, this longtime bachelor found someone. And uh, so, so I wrote this song called Quittin' Time, which is on our Whiskey, Man- Whiskey Morning Band album called The Here and Now that you can get on it, iTunes. What I love about the song is it's, that's... Like, when we found out we could sing together, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, I just play guitar and sing some backgrounds or whatever, but, like, we developed it into a duet, and it was like, oh, wow, we can, we can actually do this. So yes, you can. It's kind of where we, where we started with it. Awesome. And this, is, this song is fun because people assume it means one thing when it really means another. So quitting, quitting time doesn't always mean you're giving up. What good's it going to do? What's it gonna prove? I feel like you can see right through me And fighting it's no use I've been spending my time pretending You haven't left your mark on me No one talking about the future It's the end I see It's quitting time I'm quitting the resisting Finally admitting What's yours is mine And I am through With life without you Say goodbye to the single life Cause it's quitting time I've been on my own All this time I never felt the pull of home Until you walked by Now baby you've got me thinking About babies and a family My friends hardly recognize The new me Well it's quitting time Quitting time I'm quitting the resisting and finally admitting 
what yours is mine and I am through with love without you say goodbye to the single life cause it's quitting time Never quit the thing in my life. I only counted on me, myself, and I. Daddy taught me not to be a quitter. Mama said it's time to give it up. It's, it's amazing, amazing what I let slip in the name of love. It's quitting time, quitting time. I'm quitting the resistance and finally admitting what's yours is mine and I am through with life without you. Say goodbye to the single life cause it's quitting time. Say goodbye to the single life Cause it's quitting time Absolutely Thanks. fantastic. I don't know, there's a lesson in here. We start out with, uh, you'd wreck your life for you? <laughs> and we find out that's not bad. Then we find out quitting time isn't bad either. I don't know if we have a theme or what. We have fine to drive in the house, and we are so happy that you came out. Um, I recommend them a million times. Funky Blues Shack, two night, 7 to 10. And Marie's Friday starts at 8, eight o'clock. And then Steamboats on 30A Saturday. Yes. Seriously, guys, check them out. Thank you. Thank you so much Thank for having us. Thank you so much. We love it here. And if, if everybody, anybody gets down here to see your place, it is so cool. This awesome. place with tons of antique radios and just such a great vibe here. We love it. Thanks, guys. You are listening to 30A Songwriter Radio. Original, Original music from the Emerald Coast of Florida.